to preach this evening on a subject that's not preached on much in our churches anymore. It's a subject that has even fallen out of vogue, if you'll uh, use that term, uh, in our independent Baptist churches. I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about a place called hell. And I don't care if preachers have quit preaching it, churches have quit believing it, folks have quit talking about it. It's still real, and it's still the eternal uh, home and the eternal place uh, of people who leave this world lost without Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm afraid tonight that we've lost sight uh, of the place called hell. Uh, I'm afraid tonight uh, that we've lost sight of the reality uh, of hell. Uh, we've watered hell down. Uh, we've quit uh, preaching about it. Uh, but hell's not a party. Uh, hell's not a game. Uh, hell uh, is a real place uh, with real people uh, and real problems uh, and real pain. Uh, and my friend, if you leave this world, uh, are you listening tonight? Uh, without the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, if you leave this world without the free pardon that's offered through Calvary's flow, uh, as sure as I stand before you this evening, uh, you'll spend eternity in a place called hell. I want to preach tonight a message that I preached in 1995. Since that time, I've preached this message one other time. And God had just started burdening my heart about preaching it here tonight. I got on the front pew there, and I'm going to be honest with you. I tried every way in the world to talk, uh, to talk God out of this message. I had other messages in my Bible. I thought, God, I've come down here for one night of this meeting. I'd rather preach from some other place. Uh, but God keep directing my heart toward this portion of Scripture. Let me tell you why. You're looking at me tonight. I'm from North Carolina, the mountains of North Carolina. I don't know but one way and that's straight. I'm going to tell you this evening. God would not have me stand up here and preach this message unless there's somebody in this building and maybe several somebodies that's on their way to the very pits of hell. And church, we need to realize tonight it's not like we think it is. Did you realize tonight that the majority of the people you come in contact with are on their way to hell? That's according to Scripture. Jesus said that narrow was the way to heaven and few there be that find it. But broad is the gate. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And you know what the Bible said? The Bible said many, many, many there be that go in thereat. My friend, I want to tell you tonight that the majority of the people that we come in contact with every day are headed toward hell when they die. I want to tell you, I preach in a, a lot of different places and see a lot of different people, uh, and I'm convinced Brother Adam, I've got them at my church. Uh, they're on the church roll. Uh, they show up to service every Sunday with a Bible under their arm, uh, but they don't know Jesus, uh, and they're on, my, on their way to hell. Uh, my friend, if I've got them at my church, uh, I'm convinced tonight that they're here as well, uh, and that they're at this preacher's church, uh, and everywhere up and down the road, uh, folks who claim to be saved, uh, but deep down on the inside, they're not saved. Uh, and they're playing the game. Somebody said, what difference does it make? Well, it may not make you a lot of difference right now, but there's going to come a day when you're going to die. And when you die, it's going to make a difference whether or not you know Jesus. You can play church, say you're saved, act like you're saved, dress like you're saved, but if you've never had the blood of Jesus applied to your life, you'll go to hell when you die, as sure as I Stand here I want to deliver tonight the very heart of God. I want to be right on target. I want to talk to you a little bit tonight on the thought of still burning. Some thousands of years ago, you know, there's a lot of debate about when this story that we're read from tonight took place when it happened. But it's safe to say thousands of years ago. There was a rich man who died. And he died and he was buried and he lifted up his eyes in hell. That rich man tonight, the startling reality is this. That rich man tonight is still burning. Right. Right. That's a startling reality. Yes, sir. Thousands of years have passed. And somewhere tonight in the pit of hell, if we could roll back the carpet and could roll up the floorboards 
and dig deep enough somewhere tonight in hell, that rich man is still burning these thousands of years later. Right. And I want to tell you tonight, my friend, usually I preach about 30 minutes. When I finish this message tonight, 30 minutes will have elapsed. And that rich man will still be burning. Right. Tonight when I get in the church van and go back up the motel, go in there and shower and get in bed, that rich man will still be burning. Right. When I get up in the morning and get in my truck and start back to North Carolina, that rich man will still be burning. Right. Are you listening to me tonight? Yeah, it's not a game. No, it's not something to play around right. with. Right. It's not something to joke about. If we could ask that rich man today, if he thought it was a game, he'd say, oh no, these thousands of years I've burned in torment. It's not a game. Right. It's real tonight. And you better get right with God before it's too late. Yeah, I want to give you... Six things tonight while I preach a little while on still burning. He's still burning tonight. Yes. This ought to do two things this evening. Number one, if I was here tonight and I was lost and didn't know Jesus, it'd make me want to get right with God. I believe it. And if I was here tonight and saved and on my way to heaven like I am, and sat here in this church, it would encourage me to get out and knock on some doors. Hey. And talk to some lost folk because hell is real. Right, I'm afraid yeah. we've lost yeah. that concept in our Baptist churches. I'm afraid that we've forgotten how real hell really is. Right, we've turned our churches into some kind of a big production. We've got a lot of grand ideals and a lot of big programs. But we're not interested. We're more interested in rehabilitating sinners than we are in regeneration and see them getting saved in the day and age in which we live. We'd like for them to live a little better and look a little better and get a haircut and do a few things. What they need is Jesus. Hell's real tonight. I'm afraid we've forgotten how hell, how real hell is. I'm afraid that we've forgotten that we've got friends and loved ones and family that are on their way here or on their way there. And I'm afraid tonight that we have forgotten that there's folks in our very church and in our very midst tonight that are on their way to hell. And they're going to go there if, if we don't tell them about Jesus and lead them to Christ. Let me give you six things. He's still burning tonight. Somewhere in the heart of the earth this evening is a place called hell. He's still burning there tonight. I want you to get that. He's still burning there tonight. Let me share you these six things with you real quickly. Number one, can I say in the pits of hell tonight that he's still remorsing. What do you mean, preacher? Well, it said, uh, there that, and he cried. Notice with me in verse 24. And he cried. Now, somewhere in hell, there's a rich man tonight. And he still cried. He's still remorsing. Yes. He's still looking back on his life yes. and wishing he had another chance to get right with God. Yeah, right. I don't know how he's crying waterless tears tonight because there's no water in hell. But somehow he's crying out yes. waterless tears and he's pleading and begging for another opportunity somewhere tonight. Thousands of years after the fact, there's a rich man in hell that is still remorsing. He's still crying for another chance. I don't think it's hitting you tonight. Hell is real, my friends. I'm telling you about a real man that went to a real place called hell. I'm going to tell you tonight that he's still crying in the valley pits of hell today. Hey, I don't believe like the seventh day disadvantage that you go to hell and burn up and then you're gone. I believe, friend, hell's for eternity. I believe there's way and nice I believe it's a place where the fire's not quenched oh, and the worm dies oh, not. I want to tell you tonight, there's a rich man there and he's still remorsing and crying waterless tears tonight and saying, oh, Heritage Baptist Church, get folks saved. Don't let them come to this place of torment. He's still remorsing tonight. My friend, he didn't have time to shed a tear down here. But he's cried many waterless tears in the pits of hell. I've seen folks come. I'll just be honest with you. I've seen folks come and I've seen them turn over a new leaf. I've seen them get caught in some sort of sin. 
I've seen them be pressured by family. And they're coming and getting an altar. Never cry a tear. Never weep. They come say a few words. And I'm not saying you got to cry to be saved. That ain't what I'm saying. But I believe, son, when you get under the conviction of the Holy Ghost, yes, sir. I believe it changes you. Come on. Amen. Amen. I don't know about this yeah. crowd, Adam. They can get up there. Like you said there, they're singing in the choir. They can get up there and raise their hand and take some kind of oath. Right. Sign a little card. Bring your tithe and you'll go to heaven when you die. No, sir. That may be man's way. But that ain't God's way. Right. 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 Amen. 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 You listen to what I'm saying to you tonight. You'll get to heaven your way. Right. Your way will send you to hell tonight. Yes. And you'll be just like this rich man. You say, I'm too big to cry. I'm too proud to cry. I'm too weak to get too, too older, too proud to get in an altar and weep out before God. You may not weep out before God here, but there's coming a day all right. when you're going to cry waterless tears in the pits right. of hell and remorse through eternity yeah. and thank God. But it's going to be too late. Too late. This rich man is still remorseful. This rich man's not only still remorsing, but he's still repenting. What about that? He wouldn't repent while he lived here on earth. The Bible don't say what all he did, but he probably did plenty to repent of. He wouldn't repent here on earth. Repentance is another thing. It's old fashioned. Folks quit preaching on repentance. It used to be a time, friend, place where I grew up. We've got a lot of hollers. And there's a church in every holler. And there used to be a time them old men of God, they'd walk in the pulpit on Sunday morning and they'd preach on repentance. They'd preach about people getting an older and pleading out with God and getting right with God. And I'm going to tell you where we're at today. We've got so many folks living in sin in our church that we've quit preaching that folks should repent of their sin. We just said, you know, get your program figured out. And I'm going to tell you about God's way. God's way is a way of repentance of sin. Hey, when Tom come out of the wilderness, he wasn't preaching side of card. He's preaching repent, right. repent, right. repent. Right. My friend, I believe that repentance is still yeah. uh, what God requires. Right. Right. And repentance is what He's going to require out of you tonight. Uh, this rich man wouldn't repent on earth, uh, but tonight in hell, uh, he said, Oh God, uh, forgive me where I found you, yeah. but listen to me tonight. Uh, it's too late. Hey, right. Too late. Hey. Good he waited. Too late. Come on, brother. That's good to preach. There's some of you saying, I'll get saved. <laughs> someday. Yeah, someday. Uh, I got tomorrow. I'm reading you I'm reading to you about a man that's still burning in hell. God help. He waited too long. The Bible doesn't say. Maybe he had an opportunity the day before he died to get saved. He thought, I'll wait. I'll get saved another time. But he never had that opportunity again. So instead of coming in an altar and repenting of his sin, now he repents throughout eternity. But God is not listening. It's a sobering thought. Yes, yes. I'd rather come down here and preach revival meeting and have folks run the pews and shout because this is a sobering thought tonight, church. God can't hear it. There's a man repenting in hell tonight. Hey, God can't hear it. God's not listening. God says I'm not listening. It's kind of like Samuel told the children of Israel when they started wanting a king. He said, there'll come a day when you'll cry out because of your king. Right. That's what God said. What he said, there'll come a day when you'll cry out because of your king. And I will not hear. My friends, you say, I'll get saved tomorrow. What if God won't hear you tomorrow? Uh-oh. I'll get saved on Friday night of this revival meeting. What if God won't hear you on Friday night? What if tonight? the last opportunity you ever have 
to miss hell. Oh, God help us. What if tonight is it? My friend, I would not put it off. Yes, sir. This rich man tonight is still remorsing. This rich man tonight is still repenting. Can I say to you tonight that this rich man, he's still remembering. Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received us thy good things. Somewhere in hell tonight, there's a rich man that's still remembering. I'll give you a little story. I was a young preacher. Hadn't been preaching long, pastoring long. There's a lady come to my church and her husband's name was Earl. And we invited Earl to church a lot. He just a good old boy. He wouldn't come. It ain't a doubt in my mind, Adam, but what he didn't intend someday to get saved. He's probably in his fifties. He thought he'd get saved one day. They called me about midnight one night. It's her, I could tell through her broken, crying voice. She said, Earl is in the hospital. I'm afraid he's dying, preacher. I got in my truck and I drove, I drove as fast as I could to the hospital. I walked in that little ER area. I walked back there where they had Earl. There stood his wife. Tears running down her face and dripping off her chin. They had a tube down Earl's throat and had him intubated. Had him on a ventilator, but they couldn't help it. He was dying. They later determined that his heart literally just exploded in his chest. He was dying, and I never will forget what she said. She looked at me in the eyes. She said, Preacher, he's going to hell. She said, Watch him, he's dying and going to hell. And she looked at me. She said, Do something. Wasn't nothing I could do. He was unconscious. On a ventilator, I couldn't have talked to him if I wanted to. And I walked over there at him. People say they don't believe this stuff, but I'm not having to make it up. Something I've seen with my own eyeballs. I walked over there at his bedside, grabbed his hand as he quit breathing. And I saw him struggle. Die. Say it don't matter whether or not I get saved. That's what he thought. That's exactly right. right. Then one day it was too late. He died and went to hell. Somewhere in hell tonight, he remembers this preacher coming by and saying, Why don't you come to church, son? Somewhere in hell tonight. He remembers those tapes that his wife brought home and played me preaching about salvation. Somewhere in hell, there's a man that remembers all those things. God help. Memories are all he has because it's too late. Somewhere in hell tonight, this rich man's still remorsing, he's still repenting, he's still remembering. But can I say this? He's still receiving. What's he still receiving? He's still receiving torment tonight. Let me tell you about hell. Can I tell you about hell? This may be my last point. I don't know. I'm trying to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. That's good, preacher. That's good. Can I tell you about hell in the, for just a moment? In hell tonight, there are people that are packed on top of one another like sardines. I know this because one is gnashing on the other. Right, right. While another's gnashing on him. I believe there's families in hell tonight. You better believe yeah. they are. And daddies are falling through eternity and they're packed literally on top of one another. And they hear their sons scream. So that sounds like that sounds like Jimmy. That sounds like one of my my sons. They're gnashing on one another. How about that. And there's a constant scream. A mind numbing, mind blowing scream. In hell tonight. Do you know what bothers me most about the thoughts of hell? What bothers me more than anything else is the thought of that constant smell. Now, 16 years old, I'm going to tell this. I probably told it one other time 
since I've been preaching. When I was 16 years old, we went on a four-wheeler trip. We come back to my grandmother's and she's going to fix us some, some lunch. My uncle had MS and he'd gotten real just debilitated, couldn't go. He was living up in the edge of the yard. He thought his wife had left him. He bought a single wide trailer and he's living in the edge of the yard at my grandmother's house. He got to wear out of him. He couldn't get up. He couldn't walk around. He just had a miserable life. We were sitting there on the couch that day. And I heard something go boom. The house shut. And I look out the window. And there's Steve's trailer. And the windows are laying in the yard. And the front door's laying in the yard. And there's smoke coming up out of the trailer. My granddad, he jumped up. And he said, well, all Steve's furnace is blowed up. We run out the door. We run up through the yard, probably about a hundred yards up there in his trailer. I got up on the porch and went inside. And my uncle was a wonderful somebody. He just got down that day. He decided he'd blow himself up. He fooled with old black powder guns. Built old black powder muskets all the time. That can of black powder in it. Poked a hole in the side of that black powder and he taped a flintlock to the side of it and he poured that black powder out across that flint and struck it. It blew up in his hands. He walked up there on that porch, he had his blue pajamas on and he was sitting on the couch. And the couch was on fire and he was sitting there like this. I never will forget it. He's sitting there like this and the couch was on fire. His pajamas was on fire. His hair was on fire. Everything in that trailer was burning. Me and my brother-in-law and my dad, we ran in there and we got him and we drug him out into the yard and beat his burning body out with some blankets. Till this day, I don't like to think about that story. When I think about it, it's not the look on his face that I remember. It's not the burning that I remember. It's the smell of that burning hair and that burning flesh. You say, that won't bother me. You smell it one time. You'll never forget it. Right. Makes me sick at my stomach. Sometimes I think about it and I, I can't even eat. It turns my stomach. It makes me sick. I'm a volunteer firefighter and i got a bunch of friends that work on the ambulance and they tell me they can put up with about anything except a burn victim. Put that burn victim in the back of the ambulance, they can't hardly get the smell out of there when it's over. That's right. That's right. Tonight in hell, there's a man that smells that all the time. Still burning. Because he's still burning. He's not burned up yet. He's burning. The folks beside him's burning. The folks on top of him's burning. The folks underneath him's burning. Everywhere there's burning flesh. As they gnash on one another. You say, that's not a pretty, pretty picture of preacher. That ain't what I come to church on Wednesday night to hear. Let me tell you something, friend. It's the truth. And the best thing that I can do for you today is to tell you the truth about a place called hell. And if you don't know Jesus tonight, you're on your way to a place called hell. But throughout eternity, you'll receive torment. You'll hear the sound. You'll smell the smell. You'll feel the burn. You'll have the constant mental torment. Somebody in this church house tonight, you came in here this evening, maybe because somebody invited you. You didn't really come in here intending to get saved. But I'm going to tell you what the Holy Ghost told for me to tell you. Tonight's it for you. He's brought you to this place because He wants you to be saved this evening. He don't want you to fool around with it anymore. I'm a young preacher. Not for to get saved. Graduated in 1995. It's a boy I graduated with. I don't know if he's saved or lost. I don't know. What I do know is he, after we graduated, was 18 years old. Played basketball, big strapping fella. 
They went to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Could swim. He was an athlete. Late that evening, him and some other boys went out to the beach and he waded out about this far. They found him three days later in Surfside. He's dead. Say, so I got to be old to die. No, you don't. You don't have to be old. Preacher, I've been living this lie for a long time. I've quit living it tonight. I'm the pastor of Concord Baptist Church. I've been preaching for 12 years. If I fell under conviction tonight night and realized I was lost, I'd be the first one to get in that altar and get saved. Amen right there. I say, well, you couldn't preach anymore. You, they wouldn't invite you to places to preach. I'd rather go to heaven. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. I'd rather go to heaven. Hey, I'd rather be able to lay down on my pill at night, not have to toss and turn, and wonder about where I'm going to spend eternity. I'd rather get right with God. Hey, man. Good preaching. Good preaching. There's a hell. It's real tonight. I preached about 20 minutes. Somewhere beneath our feet, there's a rich man that's still yes, burning. Right. Still hearing the screams tonight. He's still burning. Several years ago, there's some oil, oil, oil uh, drillers in Alaska. And they built an oil rig. They said they drilled deeper than any rig had ever drilled. And them oil drillers started going crazy and losing their mind. Having to lock them up in an insane asylum. Finally, they pinned one of them down. Said, why is everybody going crazy that's worked up there in the middle of the... there in the middle of Alaska on that job? And they said, it's that constant scream that comes up out of that pipe. We've cut our equipment off. we shut everything down. We still hear a scream. It's no normal scream. My friend, tonight hell's a real place with real people that are really screaming tonight. He's still remorsing. He's still repenting. He's still remembering. He's still receiving. He's still realizing that he can't get to God. He's still requesting tonight. We could bring him up out of hell tonight. He'd say, Can I have a little water? I've not had any in thousands of years. Can I just have a little? My pastor at home, his name's Billy Mitchell. There's no soldier that was dying in our town. And he'd go visit the old guys at the VA medical center. And finally, he got on his deathbed, and Brother Billy said he walked in there one day and he had a pitcher of water under his arm. He said he'd scream for more water. He'd say, more water, more water. He'd take that pitcher and he'd pour that water down on his face and let it drip around down and soak the bed. Brother Billy asked the nurse, he said, why is he doing that? She said, we don't know. We've checked him out every way we can check him out. There's nothing that would make him require that much water. We can't figure it out. He got down next to his bedside and he said, man, can I help you? Can I pray with you? He thought the fellow was saved. He said, can I pray with you? Anything I can do. He looked over at, that, he looked over at Brother Billy. He said, I'm lost. And I realized today there's nothing I can do about it. I can't get saved. God's cut me off. I'm on my way to hell. And I want water before I go. If we could pull him up out of hell today, he'd request water. But then lastly, and I'm done, if we could pull him up out of hell today, he'd look at everybody in this building. He'd look at us preachers. He'd say, preach preachers. He'd say, tell about hell. He'd say, lest these folks sitting at Heritage Baptist Church on a Wednesday night should also come to this place of torment. He'd look at you tonight. He'd look at you young people. He'd look at you middle-aged people. He'd say it's not worth it to have a good time. 
and to spend eternity where I'm spending eternity tonight. He'd look at you and he'd say, it's not worth it to play your religious game and have to burn an eternity for hell. He'd say, get saved this very evening. If, we could, if He could come tonight, that is what He would request. Let's stand our feet tonight. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed.